Hey, what's up, family? It's your man, Daryl the Second. I hope you're doing well. I want to drop this word, but before I do, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for speaking to my heart, Holy Spirit, and I thank you for your company in my life. I thank you for always being with me in every situation, Lord, through good and bad, through hard times and easy ones, Lord. You are accompanying me there, Lord. You are the shepherd and I am the sheep. And I thank you for the mercy, the love, and the forgiveness that you continually show in my life. I thank you for the strength, the courage, and the fire in my spirit to do what you've called me to do. And I thank you for your truth. This world is full of, full of many things that call themselves the truth, but Lord, we know you are the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can get to the Father except through you, Jesus. But I thank you for the foretaste of glory, who is the Holy Spirit, the third person of God, not an it, but the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God, all with simultaneous purposes. And God, I thank you for the, the fire in my soul, the strength, the courage. I feel like a warrior in the Bible, Lord, a bold individual that you have instilled within uh, this characteristic within me, just like in all your children, to do what you call me to do. So, Father, as I speak this word, I pray that what you desire to be said is said, what you want me to say is said, and anything otherwise you would not allow me to say. <clears throat> and um, anything in me not of you, I ask you to clean up, deal with, and purify so I can walk according to you and the, your likeness and what you desire. I pray more souls come to the kingdom as a result of this word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I'm going to sing something real quick. Not long. It just popped in my head. But it's an invitation to the Holy Spirit, even though I just did that with the, uh, with the prayer. It's an old song. I forget who sings it. I don't know if it's Don Moen, but you can sing it with me. I'm not going to do it long. But it goes, um, welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Let's sing it again. Welcome into this place welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. I'm going to sing it one more time. You can sing it with me. Welcome into this place. <clears throat> Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name i don't remember the second verse but um it's always good to invite god in, in the presence of god to flow in your life he may be with you as a believer but more and more of his presence praise praise prompts that you know, um, as you heard in the songs, um, you desire to abide in the praise, praises of your people. The Bible says, he who, uh, no, not that verse. Um, the fruit of my lips give him praise, but um, darn it, darn it, darn it. There's a verse. Oh, man, it'll come to me. But there is a verse in the Bible that refers to when you praise God, his presence becomes more and more. Um, now I got to find it. I can't even quote it, but it's the truth. Um, it's like a sweet fragrance. The more you praise God, the more the presence of him is um strengthening in your life it's kind of like going to an nfl game there's an ambiance there's a synergy when you all cheer for your team you're like yeah yeah it's a it's like a form of worship it's a celebratory um response to what your team is doing or you're you're cheering your team up you're trying to empower them when you praise god you're like yeah father i just thank you lord you're so good to me god you're good he 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 loves that he responds to that he um that's why praise people think you're nuts but when you praise it means something um, one of the tribes of Israel was called Judah. That means praise. And if I'm not if I'm not wrong, which I think I'm right, though I think that was the tribe that went out uh, when they would go to battle. 
they, let's just say when they would go to battle, the um, praisers would be put up front. Because praising God, it, it brings his presence. It, it invokes him to respond. And it's not a manipulative tactic saying, if I do this, God will do this. But when you praise God, you, you're blessed because you're, encur you're, you're encouraging God, you're encouraging yourself, and you're, um, you're being in, you're obedient. But um, he responds to that, you know. So I just want to, I want to say that um, my back is sore. I went to the gym last night. I need to stretch. Anyway, I wanted to share something really with you. Um, what, what came to me yesterday, and it reminded me of something I heard um, a pastor in Oklahoma by the name of Pastor Mike Todd say some time ago. It was very interesting. This was years ago. I don't remember his wording, but I think what he said was one decision changed David's life. That one action of obedience changed his life. And what, yesterday I was listening to some things and that came to my heart. I heard a woman of God, uh, Minister Shannon Wells, talking about obedience, not knowing what it can lead to. And it just really spoke to me because that's where I feel I am in my life. And I wanted to just share. Um, so I want to reference 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I just want to uh, tell you guys, this is the, story, the chapter of David and Goliath. And so you can go back and reference it for yourself. But um, verse 12 is where I'm going to start. <clears throat> it says, now David was the son of a man named Jesse and an Ephrathite Afri from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons. Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shemia, had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers stayed with Saul's army, but David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. For 40 days every morning and evening, the Philistine champion strutted in front of the Israelite army. One day, Jesse said to David, take this basket of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give these 10 cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report on how they are doing. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts, as Jesse had directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield. With shouts and battle cries, soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife and the, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get for killing the Philistine, this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan uh, Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Now I'm going to stop there. For those of you who don't know the story, David goes on to kill this giant, but he never would have stepped into this moment had he not have heeded the instructions of his father, which was to go down and check on his brothers and to take the food to them. Sometimes God will just give you a simple task, a simple instruction that can lead to a change in your life. It can lead to you walking into your destiny. And that's why it's so important to be obedient because you just never know where it can lead to. You never know the blessings God has in store simply by you just doing what he says. And so I want to encourage you today, don't always judge something by face value. If God is leading you to do something, just do it. You would be surprised what's on the other side of that door or the other side of your obedience. I remember um, <clears throat> this was, uh, I want to say, 10, 16 years ago, um, I was in a, a musical show, a live musical, um, a musical theater singing singing and dancing, and it was really fun. It was um, here in California, and I remember at the time, I had just moved back from school. So I was in school um, out in Fresno. Um, I did a little bit of time in school there, and then I, um, I had to drop out of school because uh, I just couldn't afford the tuition, so I transferred to another school. But before I transferred, I moved back to my hometown um, in California, and then when I was working at a job, I just hated this job. It was miserable. I was working at a automotive center where you go in the backyard, it's an auction lot. You look at the cars that are going to be up for auction, all this stuff. It just was work I didn't like doing. I didn't feel like my gifts were abused there, and I just felt miserable, miserable, miserable. And I remember one time when I was there, 
I was by myself working the evening shift and I was talking to God and I said, God, please open a door somewhere where I can sing. Cause I think it had been like almost a year where I hadn't really sang. I felt like I, I that part of me was like dead. I was like, man, I miss singing. That's a part of who I am. Um, and I remember praying that. And then that was it. I just said, Lord, please open a door. Sometime later, um, I remember I was at church one day and this young brother came up to me um, and he said, hey man, there's an audition I need to go to. Can I get a ride? And I said, for sure. So I took him to get a ride. And when he was telling me what it was about, I remember and I said, oh, I think I read an ad about this on Craigslist, but I didn't think anything of it. And so they say, so yeah, they're looking for singers. It's this competition between singers and dancers. And I said, okay. So I went in there with him and he went and auditioned and he did well, but um, there was another slot. So I said, well, let me try. So I auditioned. And then um, sometime later that evening, I wasn't sure if I got the part or not because I was just, I felt like I messed up in an area, but they called me later that evening and I got accepted in the role of the theater. Um, and it changed my life. It was a, such a blessing because during the course of that, it was live theater. Um, I was accepted as a stand in. Um, and the main person who was supposed to be singing at some point, he dropped out of it. But because I had been preparing, I was his understudy and I had been learning all the songs. Um, I got to take the main role and it was, it was an amazing experience, an amazing experience. I got to sing country, jazz, R and B, swing dance. I mean, it was so cool. Um, but I wanted to say that that one act of you can say obedience, you can say service, helping the brother, because God can have you be obedient or just you helping somebody can lead to something that opened um, the door of blessing in my life. And, and it was an amazing season of my life that was life changing. And so <clears throat> just from helping that one brother and he went and did his thing too later down the road. He wasn't in that show, but he blew up and he's in L.A. doing his thing now. But I said all that to say, when you just do one act of service, you just never know what it leads to. When you're obedient to God, you never know where it leads to. And so I want to encourage you today, whatever God's telling you to do, don't allow your senses or the influences of others or what you may perceive others to think stop you from being obedient. You know, when Abraham was told by God to go and kill Isaac, he went forward to do it. And God stopped him and said, now I know how much you love me. And he said, behold, there's a ram in the bush. And so he went and killed a ram instead. Um, he was obedient. He did what God said. And so that's all I want to say. The Bible says oh, he, obedience is better than sacrifice. And we see in many instances when people weren't obedient, there was some type of consequence that came into play. And so, you know, God forgives and God's merciful. But at the same time, there is a blessing in just being obedient and do what he says. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you desire. Um, and sometimes the enemy may offer a counterfeit to make you think, no, disobey God here and get a momentary uh, satisfaction or quick fix of what you're looking for. But there's always a setup and an agenda when Satan does that. God has long-term satisfaction for you, but there are moments of sacrifice. And sometimes our flesh doesn't like to be obedient to God, but there's a blessing in submitting and being obedient to God. Whereas with the enemy, he can offer you all these great things right away, but the end result is long-lasting destruction. It can be. So, um, or will be, unless you turn and repent. Let me say that. So, I just want to encourage someone today. I think about Jesus when he was in the wilderness and Satan offered him all the kingdoms in the world. He said, just bow down and worship me. But God, Jesus is God in the flesh. He doesn't need to do any of that. He's God and God alone. He told Satan to get thee behind thee. But Satan will do that to us. He'll offer us all these things, but he wants our soul. And the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the entire world and lose his soul? So I pray this encourage you today to just be obedient and do what God says. There's a cost, but it's worth it. In fact, Jesus talks about the cost of discipleship, how you'll be hated because you love him. And so it's a choice to make. Do you want to know him and love him and be hated by the world or be a friend of the world, but be an enemy of God? Because the Bible says it's one or the other. If you're a double-minded person, you'll be unstable. And if you are lukewarm, he'll spit you out. Either be hot for him or cold or not for him. But you got to make a decision. And so for those of you watching, if you don't have a relationship with God the Father, the only way to have one is with his son, Jesus Christ. This comes to a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross, and that God the Father raised him back from the dead. And if you ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, he'll save you from your sins. You'll go to heaven, and you'll have purpose in your life. Now, you ain't going to go to hell. Um, you're saved by faith in him, not by your works. So if you want to know him, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. Please come in my heart and be my Lord and Savior. If you meant that, you're born again. And you're headed to heaven and there is a celebration in heaven on your behalf. Just wanted to show y'all, I got me a slingshot. I was at the store getting a gift for somebody and I saw this and it took it back to my childhood. So I'm going to have a Dennis the Menace moment. Also, if you want some good reading, go on Amazon and check out my new book, Random Thoughts of a Believer.
God bless you. Daryl the second. Peace.